I'm asking you to tell me what's in the bill because you are pushing false narratives. It doesn't matter what critics say. Well, it says it bans classroom instruction on sexual identity and gender orientation. I for who? For, 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 for grades pre-K through three. So five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds. <laughs>After Florida Governor Ron DeSantis emphatically insisted his don't say gay law only applied to grades three and under, he then expanded it through grade 12 a little more than a year after it was signed into law. In other words, it was never really about protecting kids, but that's a lie that he had to tell people in order to manufacture support for it. And it was a lie that he pushed really hard. I can just say, as the parent of three kids that are age five and under, Thank you for letting me and my wife be able to send our kids to kindergarten without them being sexualized. Now, to be clear, when he talks about the sexualization of children, he is referring specifically to teachers who might indirectly alert students to the existence of queer people by mentioning a student who has two moms, for example, or by referencing their same-sex spouse. And that is exactly what ended up happening in practice. Some teachers in certain counties were instructed to remove pictures of their same-sex spouses from their desks and not wear rainbow lanyards that were given to them by the actual school district who instructed them to not wear them in order to to remain compliant with the law. Now, was this the actual requirement of the law? Well, nobody really knows due to its vague wording, but the goal here was to chill any and all LGBTQ plus speech, and that's unquestionably the effect that it had. Now, earlier this year, a teacher actually resigned after the district launched an investigation into her because she dared to show her fifth grade class a Disney movie. And this Disney movie was controversial because it featured a gay character for like two seconds. Now, when you take into account that, along with the racist curriculum mandated in Florida, abuse from conservative parents, and low salaries, it's no wonder why Florida is experiencing one of the worst teacher shortages in the country. But despite the brazen unconstitutionality of Don't Say Gay, as well as the problems that it caused in Florida classrooms, dozens of states proposed their own versions of the law. And now, to make matters worse, Don't Say Gay could be coming to workplaces in Florida, too. Because, as Samantha Rydell reports, not content to only target transgender students and staff during school hours, a Florida Republican introduced a state bill this week that would effectively expand Governor Ron DeSantis's infamous Don't Say Gay rules to include government workplaces and nonprofits. How House Bill 599, introduced on Tuesday by freshman Representative Ryan Chamberlain, makes sweeping changes to Florida employment statutes to declare that a person's sex is an immutable biological trait. The bill would prohibit government employees or contractors from being compelled to use a person's pronouns if those pronouns do not correspond to his or her sex. It would also bar employers from asking any worker to state their own pronouns. Even more draconian, the bill would prevent trans employees from sharing their pronouns at all. Under the proposed law, employees and contractors cannot provide to an employer his or her preferred personal title or pronouns if, again, they do not match the worker's assigned sex. Chamberlain's bill would also ban any tax-exempt nonprofit or employer that receives state funds from requiring any training, instruction, or other activity on sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression. Instead, the bill would establish non-discrimination protections for what it calls deeply held biology-based beliefs, a new spin on religious exemptions that are commonplace in other anti-LGBTQ plus bills and conservative talking points. So they are effectively trying to mandate the misgendering of trans people in the workplace. Now, you're only allowed to state your pronouns according to the wording of this if they match your assigned sex. But I mean, if you're a trans person and you just say your pronouns anyway, and then you declare that those pronouns match your assigned sex at birth, what are they going to do? Check your genitals. It's unenforceable. It's draconian, but the whole point of this is to chill speech. It's to push queer people, trans people in particular, back into the closet so that way they can have their little Christian nationalist utopia without queer people. That's what they want to do. Now, the good news is that Florida's legislature is currently out of session, so this legislation probably won't even be considered until March of next year, so there's plenty of time between now and then to organize against it. But the bad news is that organization might be futile because Florida does not care about what its residents want, and this has the chance of passing. 
And if this passes, it could literally destroy LGBTQ plus nonprofits in Florida who actually do good work. For example, Florida lawmaker Anna Eskamani warns that this could effectively mean that organizations like Equality Florida would be banned from existing, which is the organization, by the way, that issued a travel advisory over Florida's hostility towards queer people. So, I mean, the lesson here is that this was never about parental rights or protecting children. And they're not even pretending that's the case anymore when it comes to the don't say gay law. What's the excuse for this? Are we protecting adults from the existence of queer people? Like, why would you try to justify this? What's the excuse? Oh, well, it's because we're protecting deeply held biology based beliefs. What? They're not even using the religion excuse anymore. So what is the point? They just want to be assholes to queer people. They just want to ban trans people out of existence. And this facilitates that end goal. Now, when it comes to other anti-LGBTQ plus policies that they support, conservatives still sometimes have to pretend that it is indeed about the kids until their cause reaches majority support. Now, we've seen this with gender affirming care bans. Earlier this year, Republicans in Kansas, Oklahoma, South Carolina, and Texas all introduced bans on gender affirming care for adults until the age of 26. Now, earlier this year, Florida effectively banned gender-affirming care for adults by prohibiting nurse practitioners from administering it, meaning that 80% of trans adults who received care from nurse practitioners could no longer have access to that care. Now, Michael Knowles, who infamously said that he wants to eradicate transgenderism, tweeted an article from The Telegraph titled, Parents of Transgender Teenager Lose Bid to Stop Mastectomy. And he adds, The sad inevitable consequence of not eradicating transgender Gender ideology from public life entirely. Yeah, so Michael Knowles is basically giving away the game here. Remember a couple of minutes when I rhetorically asked, why would they do this? What's the justification? Well, that's the justification. Don't say gay in the classrooms and the workplace facilitates the eradication of trans people from public life. Now, the excuse here that Michael Knowles is inadvertently pushing is, well, you see, we can protect kids from gender ideology by not only banning gender from and care for trans youth, but by also banning it for adults too. See, restricting access to gender affirming care protects kids because if they see that trans adults exist, then they might want to hop on that bandwagon. And now parents can't even stop their teens from transitioning. Except the article that he shared does not demonstrate the point that he's trying to make. If you read the article, it involves a 17-year-old who was going to turn 18 within days of the hearing, so the injunction was effectively useless. And furthermore, the teen in question claimed that their parents were emotionally abusive and told them that LGBTQ normalization in the UK was part of a depopulation effort. In other words, they were accusing their own child of being part of some conspiracy to depopulate the UK. So, no, I'm sorry, I don't think that these conspiracy-brained abusers should be able to prevent their adult child from getting the care that their doctor approved of. Now, on Twitter, journalist Aaron Reed pointed this out and explained, this is what they want, by the way, parent vetoes of trans adults getting care. And she is absolutely correct. Look, they already want to ban adults from transitioning, so if they can somehow incorporate a character witness system into gender-affirming care so transphobic parents can stop their adult children from getting the care they're old enough to consent to, well, they'll do that too. It's because it's really difficult legally to just ban gender affirming care for adults outright. It's even difficult to do it for children. So if they can find some sort of a legal loophole, that's what they're going to try to do. It's why the don't say gay law is so vague, right? You can't say you're not allowed to talk about queer people existing because that's unconstitutional. It violates the First Amendment. And I'd argue that the don't say gay law still violates the First Amendment. But what they try to do is create policies that have an effect while not directly wording it in that way so as to not be struck down by courts. But remember, these attacks on gender affirming care all started with think of the children, just like Florida's don't say gay law. And now look where we are. This is how it always goes. So in conclusion, Whenever conservatives justify discrimination against marginalized groups by feigning concern over children, you should view that as a red flag because they are literally lying to you. They don't actually care about protecting children because if they did, they would do more things to protect children, like support more gun safety laws or school lunch programs to stop children from going hungry. This is about them imposing their fascistic Christian nationalist worldview on all of us. And this is all part of a broader goal to eradicate trans people from existence, public life, as they call it, 
And um, this is what that looks like. This is the plan in action. And it's time for Americans to wake up and stop falling for the concern trolling over kids because conservatives don't care about kids. And this is really the oldest trick in the book. So by now, everyone should know it's not about the kids. It's about their bigotry. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay, 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 gay,